โรคโควิด -19 อุบัติขึ้นโดยไม่มีใครล่วงรู้มาก่อนว่าโรคนี้เกิดขึ้นมาได้อย่างไรและยังไม่มีใครชี้แน่ชัดว่าโรคนี้มาจากไหนและในเวลาอันรวดเร็วโรคนี้ก็ได้สร้างความหายนะให้กับมนุษย์โลกไปทั่วทุกภูมิภาคจำนวนผู้ติดเชื้อได้ลุกลามและล้มตายไม่เว้นแต่ละวันแต่หนทางรอดปลอดจากโรคนี้หลายประเทศพิสูจน์ให้เห็นแล้วว่าสามารถควบคุมการแพร่กระจายเชื้อโรคได้สาธารณรัฐประชาชนจีนประเทศหนึ่งที่ถือว่าจัดการรับมือกับเชื้อโรคร้ายนี้ได้ดีจนสถานการณ์การแพร่ระบาดเริ่มลดลงอย่างเห็นได้ชัดบางเมืองผู้ติดเชื้อใหม่เริ่มเป็นศูนย์เช่นเดียวกับเมืองอู่ฮั่นที่คนเชื่อว่าน่าจะเป็นถิ่นกําเนิดเชื้อโรคร้ายนี้ปัจจุบันได้เริ่มเปิดเมืองและประชาชนได้กลับมาใช้ชีวิตได้เกือบปกติแล้วในช่วงการระบาดของโรคร้ายนี้เองภาพแห่งความประทับใจของสองชาติไทยจีนในการช่วยเหลือเกื้อกูลกันได้ปรากฏชัดสู่สายตาของชาวโลกให้เห็นเรื่อยๆทั้งจากทางการจีนและภาคเอกชนมูลนิธิต่างๆที่ได้ส่งความช่วยเหลือมาให้ประเทศไทยไม่ขาดสายเช่นเดียวกับฝ่ายไทยทั้งภาครัฐและเอกชนก็ได้มอบเงินทุนสนับสนุนให้ต่อสู้กับโรคร้ายนี้รวมไปถึงอุปกรณ์ทางการแพทย์จากทางรัฐบาลไทยก็ได้ส่งให้แก่จีนเพื่อรับมือกับโรคร้ายนี้วันนี้วันที่สาธารณรัฐประชาชนจีนได้จัดการควบคุมโรคโควิด -19 ให้มีจำนวนผู้ติดเชื้อลดลงและในบางเมืองแทบเป็นศูนย์จีนมีวิธีจัดการรับมือและต่อสู้กับโรคร้ายนี้ได้อย่างไรผู้เชี่ยวชาญทางการแพทย์ทั้งสองชาติจะร่วมแบ่งปันประสบการณ์ในการรับมือโควิด -19 ให้ได้ทราบพบกับการประชุมทางไกลจากคนแถวหน้าโควิด -19 ฟรอนไลน์ทอดบทเรียนแดนมังกรโครงการนี้ถือว่าเป็นประโยชน์อย่างยิ่งต่อประเทศไทยเพราะว่าเราจะได้เรียนรู้จากประเทศที่เขามีประสบการณ์มาก่อนคือประเทศจีนซึ่งอุบัติเหตุเกิดขึ้นครั้งแรกของโรคโควิด -19 เนี่ยเกิดขึ้นในประเทศจีนก่อนที่เมืองหูฮั่นแล้วก็จีนได้แก้ปัญหาด้วยตัวเองนะครับโดยไม่มีตัวอย่างเรียนรู้จนกระทั่งประสบความสำเร็จสามารถทำให้จำนวนโรคลดความรุนแรงลงไปเพราะนั้นความสำเร็จดังกล่าวนี้สามารถที่ศึกษาเรียนรู้สำหรับประเทศอื่นโดยเฉพาะประเทศไทยได้ไทยก็ได้ชื่อว่าเป็นประเทศที่มีบุคลากรสายสาธารณสุขแพทย์พยาบาลเภสัชกรและเจ้าหน้าที่ด้านวิทยาศาสตร์ด้านสุขมีศักยภาพสูงนะผมเรียนว่าคนเรียนเก่งที่สุดในเมืองไทยเนี่ยก็เรียนแพทย์เพราะนั้นบุคลากรสายนี้ของเราเนี่ยก็จะเข่งมาตลอดแต่การที่เราเพิ่งมีประสบการณ์เรียนรู้จากโควิด -19 เนี่ยเป็นครั้งแรกเพราะนั้นถึงจะเก่งยังไงเนี่ยเราก็ต้องศึกษาจากคนที่ก็มีประสบการณ์มาก่อนผมยังถือว่าโครงการนี้จะเป็นประโยชน์อย่างยิ่งต่อทั้งสองฝ่ายโดยเฉพาะประเทศไทยครับผมก็ขอแสดงความขอบคุณและชื่นชมที่ประเทศจีนได้ให้ความช่วยเหลือประเทศไทยนะแม้กระทั่งผมเองซึ่งเป็นประธานรัฐสภาเนี่ยผมได้รับหน้ากากจากสถานทูตจีน 10,000 ชิ้นนะครับซึ่งได้นำไปแจกจ่ายให้กับโรงพยาบาลและสถาบันด้านสาธารณสุขต่างๆได้ใช้ประโยชน์อันนี้ต้องขอขอบคุณเป็นส่วนตัวด้วยครับและผมคิดว่าการร่วมมือนะัดสื่อทั้งสองประเทศเนี่ยจะเป็นการเผยแพร่ความรู้เรื่องใหญ่ที่สุดของโรคเหล่านี้คือการให้ประชาชนมีความรู้และประชาชนได้ป้องกันตัวเองลำพังรัฐบาลหรือบุคลากรนั้นไม่มีวันที่จะเพียงพอสำหรับดูแลคนไทยทั้ง70ล้านเนี่ยไม่ไม่สามารถดูแลได้ทั่วถึงแล้วครับเพราะฉะนั้นการที่เราสามารถมีสื่อขยายความรู้ไปให้ประชาชนได้รับทราบเพื่อมีวิธีการป้องกันตัวเองนั้นถือว่าเป็นการรักษาที่ดีที่สุดครับคือการป้องกันตัวเองครับครับผมขอเป็นกำลังใจให้กับบุคลากรทุกฝ่ายไม่ว่าแพทย์พยาบาลเภสัชกรนักวิทยาศาสตร์และอื่นๆรวมทั้งย่อมได้ดีฝ่ายปกครองตำรวจซึ่งคอยดูแลเพื่อควบคุมเรื่องนี้ไม่ให้โรคนี้ระบาดไปไกลนะครับนั้นขอแสดงความชื่นชมยินดีและให้กำลังใจทุกคนและหลังจากที่เหตุการณ์เรียบร้อยมากกว่านี้เรียบร้อยแล้วพี่น้องชาวจีนที่ตั้งใจจะมาเมืองไทยก็คงจะมาเหมือนเดิมและพี่น้องชาวจีนคือนักท่องเที่ยวที่มาประเทศไทยมากที่สุดครับก็รอต้อนรับพี่น้องทั้งห
和泰国 m c o p 联合举办全球疫情会诊室节目，为中泰两国医学专家搭建交流平台，共享防疫抗疫经验。面对新冠肺炎疫情挑战，中泰两国和两国人民守望相助，携手并肩。唱响了共同战役的赞歌，我们不会忘记，在中国疫情最吃紧的时候，泰国王室、政府和社会各界给予了中方坚定的支持和宝贵的物资援助。巴育总理和众多泰国朋友都录制了为中国加油的视频，让我们深受感动。双方医疗技术团队也迅速对接，及时分享了疫情信息。盐商诊疗方案。随着泰国疫情发展，中国政府、中国大使馆、地方政府、公益机构、中资企业和友好组织都纷纷行动起来，通过不同渠道向泰方捐赠 N95 口罩等急需的医疗抗疫物资，生动诠释了中泰一家亲、患难见真情的特殊友谊。我们高兴地看到。在泰国政府有力领导下，近日，泰国新增确诊病例数量持续下降。作为泰国的好朋友、好伙伴，我们为泰方取得的阶段性成果感到高兴和振奋。今天，中泰两国专家通过视频连线，分享防控经验，交流诊疗方案，是中方开展国际抗疫合作、践行人类命运共同体理念的具体举措。相信中国专家带来的中国经验和方案，将为泰方抗疫提供有益的借鉴。风雨过后是彩虹，我坚信，只要中泰两国精诚团结、密切合作，就一定能够早日战胜疫情。相信中泰关系历经疫情的洗礼，将迎来更加美好的明天。泰国加油，中国加油！สวัสดีครับผู้ชมและพี่น้องระหว่างไทยจีนที่เคารพรักทุกท่านนะในโอกาสที่ CMG ของสหรัฐประชาชนจีนนะกับ m c o t ของประเทศไทยเราได้มีความร่วมมือกันในการร่วมกันรายงานข่าวร่วมกันในการวิเคราะห์ร่วมกันในการแลกเปลี่ยนข่าวสารนะในการต่อสู้เอาชนะโควิด -19 ในครั้งนี้นับว่าเป็นข่าวที่ดีมากนะเป็นความร่วมมือที่ยอดเยี่ยมนะเป็นความสัมพันธ์ระหว่างประเทศนะในยามวิกฤตนะที่เราจะต้องปรบมือให้นะความมือของ CMG กับ m c o t ครั้งนี้จะนำไปซึ่งประโยชน์นะต่อการต่อสู้เอาชนะโควิด -19 นะในสถานการณ์วิกฤตเช่นนี้นะและในมีการแลกเปลี่ยนประสบการณ์อันนี้ถือว่าสำคัญมากครับการที่ CMG และ m c o t ได้เชิญผู้เชี่ยวชาญทางการแพทย์ของจีนที่มีประสบการณ์ในการทำงานนะทำการวิกฤตที่ประเทศจีนโดยเฉพาะนครหูหั่นนะและอีกหลายๆเมืองในประเทศจีนจนประสบความสําเร็จและได้นํามาแลกเปลี่ยนเผยแพร่ในประสบการณ์นในการชนะโควิด -19 ของสหรัฐประชาชนจีนมายังประเทศไทยและคนทั่วโลกนะนับว่าเป็นกุศลเป็นคุณประการเป็นประโยชน์อย่างยิ่งนะต่อมวลมนุษยชาตินะในการที่จะอยู่ร่วมกันและในการร่วมมือกันในการต่อสู้กับภัยพิบัติโรคไร้ต่างๆนะโดยเฉพาะโรคไวรัสโควิด -19 ในครั้งนี้นะผมก็ต้องขอชื่นชมเหนือต่อความสำเร็จของประเทศจีนนะที่รัฐบาลจีนพรรคคอมมิวนิสต์จีนท่านผู้นำจีนนะท่านประธานาธิบดีสีจินผิงและคณะนะโดยเฉพาะมวลแพทย์นะเราบุคลากรทางการแพทย์ของจีนในแพทย์นะบุคคลต่างๆที่เกี่ยวข้องนะในแล้วทั้งกองทัพนะบทแอกประชาชนจีนนะและประชาชนคนจีนทั้งประเทศได้ร่วมกัน
นะเป็นน้ำหนึ่งใจเดียวเป็นเอกภาพที่สุดนะนะในประวัติศาสตร์ของประชาชาติจีนที่ผ่านมาและสามารถนำชัยชนะนะในการต่อสู้กับไวรัสโควิด -19 ครั้งนี้จนปราบไวรัสนะทั่วประเทศจีนได้อย่างราบคาบได้รับชัยชนะในเวลาอันรวดเร็วมีประสิทธิภาพนะนำมาซึ่งขวัญกำลังใจไม่เฉพาะประชาชนคนจีนมายังประชาชนคนทั่วโลกสวัสดีค่ะขอต้อนรับคุณผู้ชมทุกท่านเข้าสู่รายการพิเศษค่ะโควิด1 9 f r o n t l i n e ทอดบทเรียนแดนบางกรโดยความร่วมมือกับ China Media Group หรือ CMG และแพทยสภาค่ะโดยอสมทหวังที่จะเป็นสื่อกลางนะคะในการสะท้อนให้เห็นถึงความร่วมมือกันทางการแพทย์ระหว่างประเทศสาธารณรัฐประชาชนจีนกับประเทศไทยค่ะเพื่อช่วยกันค้นหาวิธีการในการป้องกันและควบคุมการแพร่ระบาดของเชื้อไวรัสโครโรนาสายพันธุ์ใหม่ซึ่งเป็นต้นเหตุของโรคโควิด -19 ที่กำลังระบาดอยู่ใน185ประเทศทั่วโลกในยามนี้นะคะวันนี้มีคณะแพทย์ผู้เชี่ยวชาญทั้งจากประเทศจีนและประเทศไทยมาร่วมแสดงความคิดเห็นแลกเปลี่ยนประสบการณ์กันเชิญติดตามชมได้เลยค่ะศาสตราจารย์ดรนายแพทย์ประสิทธิ์วัฒนาภาคณบดีคณะแพทยศาสตร์ศิริราชพยาบาลมหาวิทยาลัยมหิดลศาสตราจารย์เกียรติคุณนายแพทย์อมรลีลารัศมีนายกแพทยสมาคมแห่งประเทศไทยและสาขาวิชาโรคติดเชื้อและอายุรศาสตร์เขตร้อนภาควิชาอายุรศาสตร์คณะแพทยศาสตร์ศิริราชพยาบาลมหาวิทยาลัยมหิดลศาสตราจารย์แพทย์หญิงคุณกัญญาโชคพิบูลกิจผู้อำนวยการศูนย์วิจัยคลินิกคณะแพทยศาสตร์ศิริราชพยาบาลมหาวิทยาลัยมหิดลรองศาสตราจารย์นายแพทย์ฉันชัยสิทธิพันธ์สาขาวิชาอายุรศาสตร์โรคระบบการหายใจและภาวะวิกฤตโรคระบบการหายใจภาควิชาอายุรศาสตร์คณะแพทยศาสตร์จุฬาลงกรณ์มหาวิทยาลัยผู้ช่วยศาสตราจารย์นายแพทย์ปราการถมยางกูลหัวหน้าที่ปรึกษากรมการแพทย์กระทรวงสาธารณสุขพลอากาศตรีนายแพทย์อิทธิพรคณะเจริญเลขาธิการแพทยสภาและผู้ทรงคุณวุฒิกองทัพอากาศนายแพทย์วิสิทธิ์ประสิทธิ์ศิริกุลผู้ทรงคุณวุฒิกรมควบคุมโรคศาสตราจารย์ดรเฉาปินศาสตราจารย์ผู้เชี่ยวชาญด้านโรคระบบการหายใจและภาวะวิกฤตโรคระบบการหายใจรองผู้อำนวยการแห่งโรงพยาบาลมิตรภาพจีนญี่ปุ่นศาสตราจารย์ดรกัวลี่ผิงผู้อำนวยการศูนย์ควบคุมโรคโรงพยาบาลมิตรภาพจีนญี่ปุ่นดรต้วนจุนรองผู้อำนวยการภาควิชาวิกฤตศัลยกรรมโรงพยาบาลมิตรภาพจีนญี่ปุ่นเสียดจินเกินนักบำบัดสาขาวิชาอายุรศาสตร์ระบบการหายใจและภาวะวิกฤตโรคระบบการหายใจโรงพยาบาลมิตรภาพจีนญี่ปุ่นดรจางยี่แพทย์ภาควิชาโรคระบบการหายใจและเวชบำบัดวิกฤตโรงพยาบาลมิตรภาพจีนญี่ปุ่นดรหวางยี่หมิงแพทย์ปฏิบัติการภาควิชาโรคระบบการหายใจและเวชบำบัดวิกฤตโรงพยาบาลมิตรภาพจีนญี่ปุ่นเอ่อ first of all I would like to thank our Chinese colleague who help us to provide to arrange This joint teleconference regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. I do believe your experience in China will help us to deal with this COVID-19 in a better way. And uh, not only Thailand will get benefit from uh, this conference, but I do believe everyone who observed this teleconference will also uh, learn some experience from our two countries. And the section will be something like we. Uh, introduce some questions and would love to have the response from the China. But first of all, I would like to ask my colleague, Professor Amon Li La Lasmi, to present you the situation of COVID-19 in Thailand, and then we'll be followed by some questions. I just like to briefly uh, describe the COVID-19 situation in Thailand. As you can see on the at the 22nd of April, we have a total infected cases, 2,000 and about 800, and the total days is now 49 cases. For those who are coming from above, infections found in 71 cases, and the total of 
cumulative uh, under PUI, I mean, persons under investigations is around 44,000 cases. And you see on the, the other side is the screening from the airport, seaport, country borders, and from the immigration bureau, we have screened quite a lot more than millions of persons. This is a graph show uh, infected cases report by each day. You will notice that uh, in the early March, we had just a few infected cases. You will notice that in the mid of March, we start to have uh, new cases to up to 36, 33, which this is a signal from academics, from many uh, prominent uh, leaders in our country to voice very strongly to the government that we have to impose a, a very strong, what we call enforcement of community quarantine and physical distancing, and also to uh, keep travelers from above where they travel from uh, their, uh, epidemic countries to be quarantined for 14 days. As you can see that uh, the number of new cases in the late March spy up to more than 100 cases. And this time, the government had already imposed a really strong control measurements, order to close school, university, and to avoid or ask the people to avoid all non-essential mass gathering. After we have a uh, Impose a very really good control, implement all those uh, quarantine and social distancing. This is just a, a graph of a total uh, confirmed infected cases. The green, the green line just showed the total number of cumulative cases now to more than 2,800 cases. The red line with dot is the daily uh, active case report which is now going down. As you can see that we uh, do have a very good uh, control of the spread of COVID-19. And the next slide is just to show you that uh, the infected cases um, spread to almost uh, every province in Thailand, especially in Bangkok, and in the southern part of Thailand. So this is the latest uh, information from the governments, and I think this is a very reliable source of uh, COVID-19 situation in Thailand. So this is a big situation that I would like to uh, convey to our Chinese doctors. Thank you. So I will give a short and briefly introduce of our experience in Wuhan. Uh, our world is a newly established world for COVID-19 in Wuhan Tongji Hospital. So we have six ICU beds and 44 beds for surreal cases. So we started at February the 4th. So we have more than, we have 100 COVID-19 patients together. Uh, we died, there are four patients died and we have all the patients succeeded to survive. So we have isolated rooms to avoid cross infection. Uh, we think there are three, there are three factors, very important factors, in hands on so many patients. Uh, the first is environment and equipment. So we have many rooms and monitors for the patient what sign and occupation to monitor. And we have ECMO, high floor ventilator and nasal carrier to life support and we have to make the patient to CVC and the PICC inspection. So we have another equipment for test the ABG, broadcast and ultrasound ECG and so on. This is a device. All the device are brought from China Japan Friendship Hospital in Beijing. So there are important equipment we wanted to show is a creative care ultrasound. It can give the patient the diagnosis for the substitution for CT, and the second, he can screen for the patient to predict which patient is most severe or most critical care. 
and uh, the third is a point of care ultrasound, and uh, the last is a whole body ultrasound to make the patient management. Uh, so we have the experience uh, team, team, team member or colleague. So we have one team leader uh, for coordinators. There are 30 doctors, including attended fellows and residents, most of them from the Department of Internal Medicine. And uh, very important is PCCM. PCCM including three attendants and uh, six fellows. So we also have uh, almost uh, nearly 100 nurses, including 17 nurses from ICU. And we also have one RT and one specialist for infection control. The team is very experienced with ECMO. Uh, we have uh, detailed doctor and the nurse shift, day and night shift, to make sure they have enough energy to fight the COVID-19. COVID and the last is, the, the last is the standard uh, on procedure. Uh, the procedure is most important and the critical care to save lives during pandemic and uh, emergency, uh, uh, including CPR, including CVC infection, including ECMO checklist, and so on. So this is the we were prepared for the important device to hand on to avoid delay. And we have the experienced team and the SOP to make sure the safety of the patient and uh, all the procedure, all the uh, broadcast, broadcast and uh, PCD and the intubation, we all have uh, the standard procedure to make sure the safety of the patient. So we give the patient the white sign, including SpO2 and ABG. And we also give the patient the respiratory support level. And uh, we want to emphasize the patient the respiratory rate is useful to evaluate the patient compensatory ability. Uh, we don't know what drugs is most useful for anti SARS COVID 19. So uh, maybe Dr. Tao Bing give our a, uh, more, in, in more information. So, um, so glucose cortilors is also useful for the patient treatment. And the patient uh, ARDS is not very typically for, from the normal ARDS. And the last, but not the, the, and last, uh, the infection control is most important for the epidemic. So mental care for both the patient and the doctor is also important for all the patients and all the doctors who attended the battle. So this is our team uh, experience for against the COVID-19. So thanks for your listening. So I may I list the first questions about the mutations of SARS-CoV-2. As you heard, and I think there's a lot of uh, information on social media that talk on about the mutations of SARS-CoV virus, many mutants, and as far as I get the information from the social media. They said there are at least eight strains of SARS-CoV-2 virus and the mutation may be accountable for a higher death rate in patients with COVID-19 in some European countries. So we, the question from us is there is there many uh, mutations from this virus does they behave uh, differently or similarly on the clinical presentations? Whether they uh, set up a very progressive clinical course, had a higher organ damage, caused more death, or resistant to the current antivirals that we use right now. So I would like to learn from you on this, the mutations of SARS-CoV virus. So please. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity for uh, both China and Thailand yeah, to have a, a face to face meeting. And um, um, uh, it, is, uh, it is the first, uh, first time, yes, we, uh, we learn in detail how to uh, 
uh, of the uh, situation uh, in Thailand and your uh, achievement during the uh, last two months. Uh, and I also uh, appreciate the, uh, uh, the, the great effort of my colleagues, yes, uh, fighting against the COVID-19, uh, uh, both in uh, Wuhan city and in, uh, in Beijing city. Uh, yeah, for, uh, for the first question is about the, uh, the, the virus mutation. Yeah, um, um, uh, because that it is not so long that we uh, realize is a, is a novel coronavirus. Uh, this novel coronavirus can, uh, can cause both uh, mild illness and the, uh, the fetal uh, pneumonia uh, complicated with sepsis ARDS. Uh, uh, but um, but the uh, the good news is that uh, that the uh, from the uh, from the uh, the work of uh, a Chinese virologist and um, um, there's no uh, clue of uh, a virus mutation. So uh, it, uh, so another good news is that there are at least uh, uh, two uh, uh, scientific uh, team uh, 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 are working on the uh, the program of vaccine. Uh, so uh, I, I also know that the uh, uh, scientists in America and in Europe, uh, they are also uh, hiring on the development of vaccine uh, because they, uh, they all understand that uh, um, um, vaccination is, it will be a, a protective, uh, effective pro uh, protection uh, for uh, uh, humans. Uh, not only in Asian, Asian countries, but also in European countries, and also in North America. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, I don't think it's a is a concern about the uh, the viral mutation, uh, and 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 I think you are right that I agree with you that the uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, monitor uh, in dynamic. Um, Mode, yeah, to uh, to say uh, whether there's uh, any kind of uh, a mutation of the of the virus, both uh, both in uh, in the uh, uh, virus transmission transmission and and the, the pathogenic effects of the of the vi of a virus. Uh, so I have the same um, puzzle as you have that. Uh, it seems that in Asian countries, the uh, the situation not, is not so bad uh, as he, as we have uh, uh, um, learned yes, from uh, from European countries uh, such as Italy, uh, Germany, uh, Spain, and also in uh, America. Uh, I I don't uh, I have no idea about this. Uh, there there are some hypotheses that maybe is uh, is is due to the the uh, the climate. Uh, 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 because the, uh, the the countries such as Thailand, uh, 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 Vietnam, yes, you uh, you are uh, uh, living uh, in the uh, the warm areas. I, I don't know. Uh, there's uh, there's no answer yes to uh, to the hypothesis. But uh, but I know that sometimes scientists are interested in the uh, uh, the association of the viral transmission. Uh, in different uh, 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 time zone, in, in different uh, 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 temperature uh, conditions. Uh, I, I also think that the scientists in Thailand uh, uh, may have some uh, uh, research uh, on, on the, uh, the, the transmission of the, of the, of the disease uh, in, uh, in, different, in different areas, in, in, in hot area, in warm area, or some uh, and as comparison with other other, other countries, um, uh, it, I think it's it, it's an interesting issue. Uh, uh, so, uh, um, yes, yeah, so what's your comments about it? So, thank you. So, so you do, would you think uh, the mutations of the virus would be a great concern for vaccine production? I know I, I learned from the so the media is that uh, China has already. Uh, produce a vaccine. And if there are a lot or many stains of SARS-CoV-2, we wonder if the vaccine produced in one country would be applied to other countries like Thailand as well. So would you elaborate a little bit on this? I, I no, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, um, uh, coronavirus is very different from uh, influenza virus. Uh, yes, we learned the story of 
uh, vir uh, virus mutation of uh, influenza, both A and both flu, uh, inf uh, influenza A and influenza, uh, especially influenza A. But the uh, the coronavirus, uh, the coronavirus is a uh, is a different story. And and when the uh, and nowadays that the uh, um, um, when the scientist the, uh, is uh, working on the uh, vaccine of the of the SARS coronavirus two. Uh, they are not using the whole uh, uh, virus as a, as a, as a, as a antigen. Um, uh, um, it seems that the uh, the scientists have the uh, advanced technology uh, to use the uh, to use the uh, the, the the tactic uh, to develop vaccine. I think the uh, they are focusing on the most uh, uh, effective uh, antigenic zone. So. Uh, I don't think the the mutation of the virus is a is a barrier to the development of the of the vaccine. Uh, there are some other uh, technical uh, barriers, uh, uh, such as the uh, the uh, antigenic um, uh, response, uh, such as the uh, the uh, the the antibody uh, uh, in the, uh, dependent enhance of the immune response. Um, these are uh, these are the uh, the uh, uh, the, the the concern of the development of uh, of vaccine, but not the the viral mutation. Over. I have a question about the um, the risk factors because in Thailand, sometimes we see the patient who have very mild symptoms and progress to ARDS or severe distress in just a few days. My question is: the first one, do you have any predictive factors for the patient that might develop um, progressive disease? And secondly, do you have any intervention that you think that can stop progression from mild going to the severe cases? Some different uh, phenotypes in about uh, COVID-19 in different countries, uh, but there's no uh, enough information or data to support this point. Uh, we didn't find a different, um, different cause of the disease or uh, right of ARDS uh, in different countries, uh, such as in China, uh, Italy, or US. So I think maybe the uh, source of medical staff and, and the other reasons can uh, explain why there's a the, uh, phenotype in different countries. If there are enough uh, medicine cells, uh, we can um, admit the patients as early as possible. Uh, maybe some mild or modified patients uh, couldn't de de uh, develop, develop uh, to severe or clinical uh, ill uh, states. Uh,其实我们认识到的新冠肺炎的这样的重症的病例,它的危险因素其实会关心像我们看到的年龄,确实年龄比较大的患者,相对是重症一些。另外,我们在早期关注到的 uh, 像凝血功能的异常 I would like to learn from your experience what is the most suitable medication for COVID-19 patient with ARDS, please? I用中文吧,那我们会理解的好一点。其实我觉得先说相同点,仍然是ARDS,所以在插管的时机以及呼吸支持的方式上,我想应该仍然遵循传统的ARDS的治疗。呃，这些经验呢，我们是来自于甲流以及其他一些呼吸道病毒性肺炎的一些治疗。呃，因此呢，在呃适当的PEEP以及插管的时机，还有人工肺这些呢，都是推荐的。But another side, there's some difference between COVID-19 and influenza A cause ARDS. 嗯，就是下面呢，我会说一下有什么不同。嗯，我觉得在呃甲流引起的 ARDS里，我们可以看到很明显的重力依赖区的病变。
。但是在 COVID-19 呢，我们可以看到这样的一些病变呢，并不完全遵循于传统的甲流。所以呢，我们在呃实际的操作当中呢，会发现它对于较高的 PEEP 以及肺复张这些疗法呢，可能反应会稍差。但是这些差别呢，并不影响我们。仍然遵循传统的 ARDS 的呼吸支持的模式。呃，在这些病人在 ARDS 的时候，很多病人低氧是很突出的，所以呼吸支持技术肯定是对于这类啊、呃、合并 ARDS 的病人来说是很常用的这样的。但是呼吸支持技术里面这个无创的正压通气、无创呼吸支持技术，应该是我们我觉得可能会用的会更更多一点。我们做了一些简单的一个统计，关于高流量氧疗在这里病人当中的应用，大概有 60% 的病人，对于轻中度的 ARDS 病人来说，它是可以避免气管插管。OK， 第二个就是高流量是我们一般首选的，如果高流量这个用上去之后，病人的氧额没有改善，我们会给他尝试用无创这个正压通气。但无创正压通气里面发现 CPAP 这种方式比那个 ST 这个模这个这个方式相比较而言的话 ，CPAP 患者的耐受性呢要明显的要稍微更更好一点。然后呢，还有一点很重要的就是，如果这些传统的无创呼吸支持方式不能够改善的话，早期的气管插管是非常很重要的。这个时候，早期的插管对于肺来说就是一个很好的一个一个保护，因为你可以使用小的潮，你可以使用小的潮剂量，你可以对病人进行一个评估。那么这样的话，对于病人的抢救来说是非常重要的。Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity to exchange. Uh, I like to uh ask you about what's your strategy of the antiviral treatment. Do you use antiviral treatment in a mild case or only those with pneumonia? And um, can you share with us uh, what's the antiviral regimen that you use in general? Do you segregate between the ones with mild or the one with more severe? Do you use uh, many antivirals in the same time or just single drug? I think it is the priority for for the treatment of a, of a one kind of infectious disease, and if the infectious disease is caused by virus, uh, from the very very early beginning at the end of the, the uh, December of uh, uh, 2019, uh, when when I first look at the uh, the first uh, uh, cohort of cases, yes, I work with the local physician in Wuhan. Yes, we have uh, um. Have the impression that it is um, it is one kind of viral pneumonia uh, uh, disease. And at that time, we have no idea about the the, the causative pathogen. Uh, as soon as we got know that the uh, the the disease is caused by a, a new coronavirus, yes, we uh, at first we went back yes to um, uh, uh, to the treatment choices uh, for uh, other kinds of coronavirus, uh, SARS coronavirus and MERS coronavirus. And when we look at the literature, uh, uh, we find that lopinavir, uh, ritonavir uh, is uh, is widely used. Um, this drug is uh, it, it was used to treat uh, SARS patients as early as 2000, uh, 2003 and 2004. Um, although there's no randomized control trials, uh, the uh, clinical data of lopinavir, ritonavir is uh, encouraging. Uh, this is. Uh, 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 this, uh, this evidence give us confidence that maybe we can start lopinavir and tonavir to uh, the treatment of uh, COVID-19. And we also learn from literature that during the MERS outbreak, uh, both in uh, uh, both in uh, uh, South, uh, 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 in the uh, the Middle East and also in the uh, 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 Korea, um, uh, they all use the uh, lopinavir. Uh, right on, we are to treat the uh, MERS patients. Uh, this is uh, another reason that we tried to test lopinavir right tonavir in the uh, in the treatment of the uh, uh, COVID-19. Um, and we have uh, 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 registered the first randomized control trials of lopinavir uh, right tonavir for uh, severe uh, COVID-19. Um, uh, as uh, from the the early January, and we finished the, the trial uh, early uh, March, and we published the paper in Union Journal of Medicine 
uh, uh, on March uh, 18th. Um, but uh, after we have public paper, yes, we uh, we got email from all over the world that most of physicians think it is a, a negative uh, trial, uh, and, um, and some of them have abandoned uh, lopinavir, ritonavir to treatment of COVID-19. But I think it is too early to stop lopinavir, ritonavir, uh, because that the uh, I believe that not every uh, physician have full. Uh, um, uh, uh, have fully uh, read the, uh, the 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 whole data and the whole uh, outcomes. And when we look at the 28 day mortality, we can also find that there are some difference, although the difference is not uh, significant. Uh, for a lot group, the uh, the, uh, the 28 mortality is 19 percent, but for the standard standard therapy group, the the mortality ratio is 25. And we also uh, do the subgroup. Uh, we also uh, 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 try to analyze them, uh, some kind of secondary outcome, such as the ICU stay, such as the, the clinical improvement on the day 14 and the day 20, 29. We also find that the, uh, the, 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 the success ratio on the, uh, uh, on the day 14, we can find that the, for lopinavir group, the, the success ratio is, is 45%, but for standard therapy, the success, success ratio is, is only 30, uh, 30%. Also, there's a significant difference. And, and we also found that, that there is a less uh, um, uh, ICU stay uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the patients who receive lopinavir. So if we put all the data together, we can find that uh, it seems that lopinavir and tonavir is, uh, is, is beneficial, uh, at least to some um, uh, uh, group of patients. And we also do the, the subgroup analysis. Uh, we uh, uh, we divide patients who receive lopinavir within 12 days, and then those uh, later than 12 days, we can find that uh, patients who receive antivirals less than 12 days will have more uh, benefits compared with uh, those who receive antivirals later than 12 days. So this is why we uh, we uh, do uh, we uh, make the, the study design of remdesivir trial. Uh, we have the the definition. Uh, uh, of the including criteria as that, that we only uh, enroll patients within 12 days. So, uh, uh, so you may understand that the antiviral uh, is one of the, uh, one of the key uh, treatment choice for, uh, for patients. And I believe that antiviral should be given as early as possible. Um, um, another choice is uh, remdesivir. Yes, maybe you have already uh, learned the story. Uh, the first case were published in New England Journal of Medicine, and 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 recently the New England Medicine uh, uh, reported uh, another paper of the uh, compassionate use of uh, remdesivir uh, for uh, severe COVID-19. Um, all the data are uh, encouraging, but uh, but I uh, but but we have to keep in mind that the uh, only uh, randomized controlled trial with placebo as control can uh, help the clinicians to uh, answer the question whether remdesivir is, uh, is effective, whether remdesivir is safe enough to treat uh, COVID-19, especially for severe cases. Uh, in Wuhan, we also tried the coval uh, uh, covalescent plasma. Uh, um, yes, uh, you, you, maybe you are also very familiar that the, uh, this kind of treatment has been used for many, many years, more than 100 years, as back as pandemic um, influenza in, in 19, uh, 1918, yes. Um, the, there are, uh, uh, at this time, there are at least two uh, reports, one paper uh, in JAMA and one paper in, uh, uh, in, in PINAS, uh, but only uh, a small number of cases. Uh, um, the, first, uh, the first paper uh, was published in JAMA. Uh, the authors uh, successfully treated five patients with convalescent plasma. Um, the data show that the, uh, there's some clinical uh, improvement after treatment of convalescent plasma. That second paper uh, enrolled uh, 10 patients. Uh, so uh, 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 these are only uh, case report, uh, but it's, uh, it's one kind of choice that is uh, maybe uh, convalescent plasma for treatment of severe cases. Um, but the uh, but uh, but one um, in, including criteria is that the uh, the uh, the donor should have high titer uh, antibody uh, uh, to uh, COVID nineteen. Um, 
Um, so what's your experience from Thailand? Yeah, um, what kind of antiviral uh, do you use uh, to treat uh, COVID-19, uh, both mild cases and severe cases? Over. May, may I just uh, pursue on the antivirals for uh, COVID-19? As you know that there are many antivirals for COVID-19. And if we set lopinavir, ritonavir at the standard, would you compare, let's say, favipiravir had a better or lesser effect antiviral compared to lopinavir or ritonavir and other drugs? Could okay. you tell us your experience on favipiravir compared to lopinavir? Yeah, from uh, from the the uh, uh, in vitro uh, activity testing, it seems that the uh, lapinavir rat ratonavir uh, uh, combination is uh, uh, much stronger uh, uh, than uh, favipiramir. Uh, our group are very familiar with favi, but we have not tested. Uh, Favi uh, among patients in uh, COVID-19. Uh, we have uh, tested Favi uh, in severe influenza viral pneumonia, uh, and we have published a paper uh, in uh, uh, Journal Infectious Disease last year. Uh, in our uh, clinical trial of severe influenza, we used the combination of Favi and Oseltamvir. Uh, so uh, the concern of the, of the, uh, of the, of the uh, routine dosage of Favi in severe COVID-19 I don't think the uh, the dosage is enough uh, for for severe COVID nineteen. This is why that the uh, we do not recommend uh, Favi uh, for severe COVID nineteen in China. Over. I I like to share with you our clinical guideline, uh, which uh, of course there is no um, uh, good RCT data uh, in my own case, but. Uh, with risk factors like elderly or obese, we are providing or suggesting a combination of two drugs, the colloquine or hydroxychloroquine plus lopinavir. We are, uh, have been discussing among the expert groups and now we are worrying about monotherapy uh, when you have the virus where it might progress we like to combat them hard and early. So uh, chloroquine and, and uh, lopinavir hit in the different targets of the viral cycle. And that's yeah. why it should be uh, very good in combination in theory. Uh, and both drugs are widely available around the country because we have a lot of patients uh, with HIV AIDS that, that has been using lopinavir, so we have a large number of the, the drug uh, storage. And also, colloquine has been uh, locally produced. We use a lot of this drug for malaria, and uh, we don't have any problem with the supply, and it's so cheap. Uh, and uh, as you have elaborated, and it's true that short-term treatment, there is no problem with the side effects that we could I have to be worried about. But for a uh, pneumonia case, then we add favipiravir. Uh, we don't have remdesivir in the country, but we do have favipiravir. But this is, uh, comparing to you, this is quite uh, an aggressive strategy of antiviral therapy on our side. Uh, what we found is that if we give antiviral agents, um, you know, quite early, the risk of uh, progressing to more severe cases, I mean, to more severe pneumonia uh, is a lot less. Uh, the very first, uh, uh, two, first day or two after the initiation of treatment, the chest X-ray might progress a bit. But then after 48 hours seems to uh, uh, reduce uh, the, the uh, improve the chest X-ray and the clinical uh, appearance, but we don't use any Chinese medicine, so perhaps that's another thing that's very uh, different from from uh, your practice over there. I, I heard that you use a lot of Chinese uh, medicine as well together, right? 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for uh, for the sh uh, sharing of the uh, the, uh, the the Thailand uh, experience with uh, our Chinese skilled nations. Uh, I uh, I totally agree with you that maybe a combination of antivirals will be the uh, the solution yes to uh, to COVID nineteen, especially uh, for uh, mild cases, but with the uh, uh, high risk uh, for uh, severity of illness and those with severe. Uh, Conditions, uh, yes. Um, I think your choice, your choice is uh, is reasonable. Yeah, yes. In China, yes. Although I mentioned the monotherapy of uh, lopinavir and ritonavir, yes. As you mentioned, that we nearly uh, almost every patient will receive the tra uh, traditional Chinese medicine. So in this, uh, uh, in is this uh, uh, means that we. Uh, we do uh, use the combination. I have a question about anti-inflammatory treatment, including steroids. Um, how would you start steroids? Do you have any um, indicator or indication that you're going to start systemic steroid? And if you want to start, what is your, your recommended dose for steroid? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a good question. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. From very very early beginning. Yeah. Uh, 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 clinicians in China have thought of, uh, of, of, the, of the use of uh, uh, corticosteroids in uh, COVID-19. Yeah, uh, maybe you have all, all already uh, uh, remember that we uh, 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 during the uh, 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 SARS outbreak in, uh, in China, uh, clinicians usually use high dose corticosteroids yes, to, uh, to treat uh, uh, SARS patients. Uh, not only in uh, Guangdong, in uh, Hong Kong, but also in Beijing. Yes, uh, because they, uh, these three cities are the uh, have the most uh, large number of SARS patients. Uh, but as soon as the uh, when um, uh, um, yes, I uh, I worked uh, in SARS uh, wars uh, in the year 2003, and I also have experience of use high dose corticosteroids to SARS patients, but. But as soon as the uh, uh, we uh, do the analysis of the uh, of the efficacy and safety of corticosteroids for SARS, we find that high dose uh, corticosteroids uh, do even do harm yes to uh, to SARS patients. So again, um, and, um, from the end of 2019 and the early 2000, uh, 2020. Um, uh, um, um, uh, we have to think about uh, how we can use corticosteroid for those patients, uh, and the uh, uh, and we uh, um, and we uh, recommend uh, low to moderate doses of uh, uh, corticosteroid. This is a dosage, and the uh, uh, the timing is very very important. Yeah, uh, when we uh, uh, start uh, corticosteroid. Uh, uh, after several rounds of discussion uh, between uh, um, uh, a national uh, expert and the local uh, clinicians, yeah, we draw a, a consensus that the uh, uh, corticosteroid should be given um, uh, on the time point. That is the, the, the rapid progression of the disease. Uh, that is the, uh, um, uh, such as the, uh, uh, the, the, the rapid deterioration of the oxygen or the uh, uh, the rapid increase of the chest X-ray uh, of the uh, uh, chest X-ray uh, shadow on the chest X-ray, um, and the um, uh, and the duration of corticosteroids should uh, should be no uh, no longer than one week. Uh, so um, uh, when, um, another, I think uh, a concern of the corticosteroid is that the uh, the 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 risk of the secondary bacteria of uh, and and fungal. Uh, infection and also the uh, the, the such as the, uh, the 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 glucose or the hyper uh, hypertension uh, side effects, but uh, but but if we uh, we use low uh, low to moderate doses, the uh, the the side effects of corticosteroid it, it seems is not so uh, so big uh, and and we have just uh, uh, did a, a retrospective. Uh, uh, um, uh, a uh, cohort study and uh, to uh, study the accuracy of corticosteroids and the the, the side effects. Uh, so the uh, our uh, our, um, our preliminary data uh, show that uh, corticosteroids is uh, is no effect on the 28 day uh, 28 day mortality, uh, but for uh, 
uh, for sub subgroup of patients, as I mentioned, that the uh, the, um, and the the progression. Uh, uh, it seems that corticosteroid can, uh, in in some way, stop the progression of the disease uh, 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 from the uh, deterioration. Um, but uh, but it doesn't. But it doesn't mean that the uh, the uh, the the corticosteroid can rescue the life of the patient. Um, but uh, the good news is that for, for low to moderate do dosage of corticosteroid, the, uh, the secondary bacteria or fungal infection is not, is not significant uh, between corticosteroid group and the other control group. Yes, just a practical question. Uh, when the pandemic of COVID-19 is under control in Wuhan, and the majority of your hospital became to restore their routine activities, um, what is your practice uh, for the uh, P of work up, P operative work up for ordinary surgical patients in China? Do we need to perform PCR tests in every patient who uh, go to surgery? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Yes, the um, uh, I. I don't think that the uh, uh, for every uh, patient is uh, under uh, surgery uh, need uh, uh, COVID nineteen PCR testing. Uh, I think the uh, the um, but we should be very cautious about the, uh, the 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 history of contact and the uh, 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 the respiratory uh, uh, tract symptoms. Uh, that's. Um, we should be very, very careful because the uh, some of the COVID-19 has only mild uh, symptom, uh, such as the uh, the, the 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 mild cough or the, uh, the 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 fatigue or the the loss of appetite. Yeah, um, but I but I think the uh, for for every uh, uh, patient who is under uh, uh, surgery should take the chest X-ray uh, or CT scan. Uh, so uh, as long as we have the uh, the clue on uh, uh, chest uh, chest X-ray or CT scan, he or she uh, need the uh, the COVID nineteen uh, uh, PCR. Um, um, and for I think for for some um, uh, from for some large surgery, I think it is a routine. Yes, for uh, before uh, before surgery, such as the uh, the lung function testing, uh, such as the uh, the chest X-ray. Uh, uh, so it is the routine in Thailand. It's the of guidelines. The doctor will say pre-operation for yeah, which there is a very different of practice. Uh, some hospital in the uh, uh, pan, uh, in the epidemic area uh, perform mm -hmm. all of the patients uh, testing before surgery, but uh, the hospital outside the uh, uh, epidemic center, uh, maybe the province there is no any case of uh, COVID-19 that perform routine pre-operative workups. This, uh, this is about the case with recurrent infections. As you see, you may know that there are many, in Thailand we have two cases who already recover from COVID-19 and then they develop COVID-19 again a few days or weeks later. And I saw uh, many reports in Korea, uh, in European countries. So I would like to, uh, even in China, as we have many, many uh, recurrent cases. So what our question is, those who have recurrent infections, are they still contagious? Which means that they still spread the virus to their closest uh, their, uh, family members? And what are the clinical cause of patients with recurrent illness would be the current, uh, the clinical cause may be more severe or milder or something else. Yes, this, this is something that we like to learn from you. I think it's a difficult question, um, but, but we should be very, very careful if we make the diagnosis of recurrence uh, because uh, uh, according to the animal model study, uh, the, uh, the Chinese virologists use monkey uh, um, model yeah, to, to test whether the monkey can reinfect it with the, the same uh, such coronavirus 2, the answer is no. So uh, I don't think recurrence is often. Um, uh, if we read literature, but the, uh, to our knowledge, there's no uh, scientific report of the recurrence, but 
we only heard the, the story from news, news report. Uh, so, uh, so um, um, uh, when, when we look at patients suspected to have reoccurrence, we have, we have to think in mind that whether this is because of the, of the, uh, the virus shedding uh, lasting uh, 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 in the long term. Yeah, which means that the, uh, uh, on the day of the, of the patient was discharged with negative RNA, um, after they re uh, he returned home and re-testing uh, uh, with a positive RNA, it doesn't mean they're recurring it there, but, but because of the, uh, the, uh, the second, uh, this only means that the second testing is positive. Um, it is common. It is common. It is because of the uh, the, the RNA virus uh, shedding uh, is is uh, it can uh, can be a very long term. In our experience, the uh, the uh, the longest the uh, longest vir uh, virus RNA is is more than two months. So you can understand that the uh, it is it is not difficult to understand that the uh, for uh, for uh, for a patient uh, on this child negative and 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 and, and uh, appear positive. Uh, because there's most of the RNA testing is based on the uh, the, th the 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 throats, uh, um, um, nasal, uh, 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 pharyngeal uh, swabs or throat swabs, and uh, according to a report from Chinese uh, uh, doctors, there there's a positive ratio of the nasal pharyng pharyngeal swab for uh, uh, COVID-19 is uh, is only thirty percent. So it uh, so uh, one time is positive and the second time is negative or first time negative second time is positive is common. So um, uh, in my uh, knowledge, that reoccurrence is not so uh, 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 so often, uh, uh, and we should be very careful to make the diagnosis. Over. And it's no concern according to your experience. That right, Bob. Patient with recurrent uh, COVID-19 is no concern, so you don't think that is this the big problem? Uh, yeah. After that, a bit uh, in China, uh, do you develop uh, animal models for COVID-19? You just mentioned monkey, yeah. and is there anything any animal else I would like to know? Yeah, uh, another kind of animal model is uh, is is mouse uh, mouse model, but. Uh, but for mouse model, uh, for for the uh, for the healthy mouse model, is not not easy to uh, to develop severe illness. It is a problem. So if you uh, if you want to uh, to uh, to um, um, uh, have the uh, the severe uh, mouse uh, 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 illness model, you should use a special. Uh, um, uh, a uh, special uh, uh, um, um, animal uh, um, uh, and that is the uh, AC2 uh, uh, specialized mouse to uh, develop the severe illness uh, over. This is the final remark from Thailand and um, that's on behalf of the Thai Medical Council, uh, Thai Medi the Ministry of Public Health, Thai Medical Schools and also the Thai governments I would like to thank the Chinese experts, Chinese professors, all who share the really rich information and your experience with us. Uh, since COVID-19 is a new pandemic, a new virus, so the Terry Conference to share your experience is very vital for us to care our patient and also to control the COVID-19. I would like also to congratulate the Chinese uh, government for a very successful recovery from the COVID-19 crisis in your countries, which is really fast and set an example for other countries to follow. I think you have already passed the harder times on COVID crisis while other countries are facing them right now. So I also would like to admire many medical personnel, doctors and nurses for their earliness effort to fight against COVID-19 to take the best care for their patients, which very unfortunately, some of them succumb in, as we know. I think when uh, we have more um, experience and more information on COVID-19, maybe we have 
a thing like this, like a teleconference to share our experience again. And I would like also to thank the Chinese uh, Embassy in Bangkok and uh, MCOT in Osomoto for arranging this uh, teleconference. And I would like to say thank you very much to us here. To us here. จบลงไปนั้นก็คือการประชุมทางไกลโควิด -19 Frontline ถอดบทเรียนแดนมังกรค่ะทุกวันนี้จีนสามารถยกเลิกคำสั่งล็อกดาวยกเลิกการปิดเมืองได้แล้วในหลายพื้นที่ในขณะที่ประเทศไทยของเราก็ได้รับคำชื่นชมจากทั่วโลกค่ะว่าสามารถรับมือกับสถานการณ์โรคระบาดได้เป็นอย่างดีมีผู้ติดเชื้อเพียงหลัก 2,000 กว่าคนต้นๆเท่านั้นนะคะจากผลการประชุมครั้งนี้ทําให้เราได้เห็นความสัมพันธ์ความร่วมมือระหว่างประเทศไทยและจีนในอีกมิติหนึ่งค่ะและก็สื่อให้เห็นว่าไทยและจีนยังคงเป็นมิ่งมิตรที่ดีต่อกันทั้งในยามทุกข์และยามสุขสําหรับวันนี้ขอขอบพระคุณบุคลากรและหน่วยงานนะคะไม่ว่าจะเป็นแพทยสภาและ China Media Group หรือ CMG ที่ช่วยทําให้การประชุมครั้งนี้บังเกิดขึ้นได้สําหรับวันนี้ดิฉันวัชรินเศรษฐกุดันและทีมงานขอลาคุณผู้ฟังคุณผู้ชมทุกท่านไปก่อนสวัสดีค่ะ